Hi all, my name is Greg. Um, I wanted to take the time to share a demo with you about what I've been working on recently. Um, I've been updating all of the Thoth alerting to use native OpenShift monitoring rather than the more custom stuff we had before with multiple alert managers. And uh, I just wanted to do this because I hope uh, people can take away from some of the stuff I've learned and it could maybe help some of you. So. Um, I want to begin by talking about OpenShift monitoring itself. It's usually only for cluster level resources like pods, PVCs, jobs, et cetera. Um, but we can actually change that. So if we look in the OpenShift monitoring namespace uh, and we go down to config maps, there should be this cluster monitoring config, which we see here. Um, these are applied to all of the cluster mo wide monitoring uh, that is done. And we can set this enable user workload to true, and this will actually enable OpenShift to chuck all of this, uh, all the user defined projects, uh, the monitoring for them into this general monitoring tab. And we can see them along with the monitoring for cluster level resources and, and higher level stuff. So uh, once that is done, we would want to just take a look at this user workload monitoring namespace. OpenShift user workload monitoring namespace. And in here, there's going to be a config map called user workload monitoring config for all of the user defined projects that you're going to be monitoring along with everything else. Um, if you want to apply any configuration to that, this would be the place to do it. Um, so just verify that this is up and running, and you should be uh, decently uh, securing your assumption that OpenShift monitoring is now able to monitor user defined workspaces. So after we've enabled it, we want to uh, basically set up the scraping for those metrics, and that's done with service monitors. So we can look here at a example service monitor I've mocked up for Thoth Middle Tier um, prod, and it's pretty simple. Um, you just need to make sure to match up the ports uh, and the scheme. We use HTTP for this route, uh, and this is how you would go about relabeling any Prometheus labels. So start with the source label. Uh, and I'm just doing a regex match for a specific value. You can see that here. It's just going to grab this Argo server. Um, and we are going to replace, as in create a new label, um, replacing the values that we got from that. The label's name is going to be field, and we're just going to hard code in that route. So this is how you'd go about doing any of those relabelings, and hopefully you can use that to create your own labels. Um, but now we've defined the, the service monitors. There were four others, so these comprise in total the five service monitors for Thoth, uh, enabling our metrics to be scraped. Um, so now that that's up, we want to check and make sure that they're actually getting scraped. So uh, in here, OpenShift monitoring, I'm just going to look for that field value, because that was something we just added, and it wouldn't be there uh, previously. So if we actually run this, we can see that, yes, our metrics are actually being exposed um, from you know, Thoth middle tier prod. Uh, now that we know that our metrics are being exposed, you'd want to have or update the Grafana dashboard that you would be then displaying this on. So uh, I didn't write these dashboards myself. These are the, the Thoth dashboards that were already previously existing, and I just updated them with that specific field value. Uh, and then you'd want to make sure that in the Grafana instance, it's actually able to find those. So I'm just going to toss in that same query that I did to be able to look for that metric. And we can see, boom, it shows up. So we know that not only are our metrics getting scraped to OpenShift monitoring, but it's then forwarding it on to Grafana. And Grafana has access to it. So the last part that we need to look into is just the alerting. And there's two main pieces to the alerting. There's the alert manager itself which defines the routing rules for all alerts. And there is the GitHub receiver, which defines the rules, what the alerts are. Um, so we can take a look at this. It's You can look at the file if you want more information, but I'll just go over the, the key points. It's global configurations applied to everything. There's inhibit rules that will mute an alert if it matches you know, these um, parameters and evaluates the true for these source and target matchers. Um, the source matcher is, a, it must exist, uh, so this, the severity must be critical, uh, and target matcher is like a regex match, so the severity in this case, this is pretty similar, it must be either warning or info in that case, so these would mute certain alerts. 
uh, and then you're going to go ahead and define your receivers. Um, the alert manager is hooked up to the receiver and gets routed through, so that way the receiver can actually create those alerts in GitHub. So I defined one for Thoth in this instance, uh, just part of what I was working on. And then under routes, we'd want to define the routes, which would specify, yes, which alerts actually go where. So these are all the ones that we just aren't really going to bother with right now. Uh, they're routing to a null receiver, so it doesn't really go anywhere. Um, but then it just has a matcher, which would need to evaluate to true for it to pass that receiver. So these are all the null ones. We can see some for our existing GitHub receiver. Uh, and then I defined a new Thoth GitHub receiver, which will deal with all of those alerts. And it just takes anything with the name of Thoth in it. So those are the rules. And we've looked at the, uh, or that's, sorry, that's the routing. And now we can look at the rules. Um, so these are the rules. It has an alert with the name expression, which if evaluates to true, will trigger the alert. Uh, four just determines how long that needs to be true before it starts alerting on that. And we have some metadata here, which we can use to triage and drill down into uh, what is the alert and figure out what, what it actually means. So these are some pretty simple ones. We can just take a look at one, for instance, Thoth Advisor results missing in prod. It basically just looks at the reporter requests uh, for uh, on MOC prod for the component advisor, and it subtracts out the actual reports that are made in prod advisor. Um, so pretty self-explanatory, but that's an example of these alerts. They're pretty easy to implement. Um, and then finally, we just want to verify that they are actually getting created. So if we just go to alerting in general, we'd want to look for any alerts that are not platform related, i.e. user defined. So if we take that out, we can see that this Jupyter Hub service is in fact down. Uh, it's currently giving us a one value, which makes it means that it's firing. So this proves that we've finally gotten our alerts all the way through to the alerting piece of it. And uh, yeah, that's everything I've been working on for the last two weeks. Um, I hope you guys understand some pieces of how to define new labels and how regular OpenShift monitoring works. And I hope this was helpful more generally. Thank you so much for your time.